Okay, this is going to be part one of two videos on Newton's method. Um, and what Newton's method is, is just another method of finding the zeros of a function. And if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch uh, the previous video, which is the bisection method. Now what the bisection method was, it was a non-calculus based method of finding zeros. And if you watch the video, you'll see it's not a particularly uh, efficient method. It takes about 21 steps to get to six decimal accuracy. And what you'll see in this video is that using Newton's method, which is a calculus-based method, you'll get to the answer a lot quicker. Uh, so first of all, before we start on this, let's go back and uh, take a quick look at what we got from the previous video on the bisection method. Now, if we were trying to find the zeros to the function that we chose, the actual zero uh, turned out to be this to nine decimal accuracy. Now, when you did the bisection method, um, it took, oh, about 21 steps. We wanted six decimal accuracy, and it wound up taking 21 steps to get to an answer that was that accurate. Now, if you use Newton's method, let's just take a quick look at the answer, and it'll give you an idea of how much more efficient it is. So, if you use Newton's method, <coughs> here's what it would look like. After the first iteration, both Newton's method and the bisection method both uh, return a first step of 1.5. But look what happens after that first step. In the second step, Newton's method is accurate to within two decimals. By the third step, Newton's method is accurate to within five decimals. And then finally, when you get to the fourth step, Newton's method is already accurate to nine decimals. So it's an extremely accurate method, and it gets to the answer very quickly. But now the question is, how does it do it? Well, let's take a look. And in this video, we'll uh, actually derive Newton's method. In the next video, we'll show an example of how to use it. So back to, the, uh, back to the graph we had. Now, the problem with the bisection method is that it required two points, a left end point and a right end point, and all it did was just bisect the interval, and it didn't pay any attention at all to the function. But what Newton's method is based on is this. Suppose you let the function itself guide you to the solution. So how exactly would that work? Well, let's take a look here. Now, the idea is, Pick a starting point somewhere close to where the zero is. So I'm going to pick this, and I'm going to call this, just to give it a number, we'll call it x0. Now the idea is to go from uh, x sub 0. Let's go up to the function, and that would take you to about right here. So here's a point on the function. Now from that point, let's draw a tangent line to the function. So what I'm going to do is, starting here, I'll draw a tangent line that will take me down to approximately, uh, say, about right here. So there's a tangent line. Now, Newton's method is based on this, is to, uh, you've got an initial point x sub zero, so where should your next x be chosen when you do the second iteration? And the idea is, if you notice, that the tangent line crosses the x-axis at about the same point that the function crosses the x-axis. So the whole premise of Newton's philosophy uh, is just, uh, let the tangent line guide you to the zero. So if you were to pick where the tangent line crosses the x-axis as your second point, then you could do the following. So uh, at, for x sub 1, if this was x sub 0, at the end of our first iteration, we'll pick x sub 1 where the tangent line crosses the x-axis. And then just repeat the process. Using this one, go straight up and get a tangent line here. So we'll go from here up to here, uh, and here will be a new point. Now draw a new tangent line. So starting at this point, we'll draw a tangent line, which will take us down, say, to about right here. And then you just keep repeating the process. Uh, where this new tangent line crosses the x-axis, right there, let that be x sub 2. Go from there up to the function, which gets you to right here, um, draw another tangent line, and you can see it doesn't take long to get to a pretty accurate answer. So if I went from here down to a tangent line, say here, um, now the tangent line, the red tangent line, crosses the x-axis almost where the function does. And if you do that, you can get to the zero very, very quickly. So that's what the process looks like. Now, if you actually look at Newton's formula, I think we'll go ahead and put the formula up here first, and then we'll talk a look where it comes from. So Newton's formula looks like this. 
and it says x sub n minus the original function evaluated x sub n divided by the derivative evaluated x sub n gives you your second choice, second iteration. So the whole point here is this. If you know the first point, how do you know where that second point is? And that's what we'll do in this video. So let's clean things up just a little bit here before we get started. Uh, I want to remove a couple things on here and just get us back to the first two points. So let's get rid of all of this right down to here. Okay, and actually we'll go ahead and remove these two as well. Now I want to do this in general terms. So in general terms it would look something like this. Is you have to have a starting point, so we'll call this starting point um, x uh, sub n. So this will be x sub n right here. Now again, our, the question is going to be, if this is x sub n, this point over here would be x sub n plus 1. But the question is, where is it? How do you know where it is? And that's the whole purpose of Newton's method, is given the first point, allow you to figure out where that second point is. And you do that by using the slope of the tangent line. So let's go up here and kind of run through this. So uh, what I want is the slope of that red line, the slope of the tangent line. And you guys know that uh, the slope of the tangent line is the change in y divided by change in x. And that's going to be equal to the slope. Now the idea, here's the first point. This point up here, we'll call it, just in general, x1, y1. And this point down here <coughs> would be x2, y2. So you've got an x1, y1, and an x2, y2. And you're familiar with the fact that the change in y would be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and that's going to be equal to the slope. Now we want to put this in our particular problem, so what this would be, um, this point right here, um, in reference to our problem, the original value, x1 is x sub n, and y1 would be the function evaluated at x sub n. So that's x1, y1. <coughs> now this one, the x value is going to be x sub n plus 1, but since you're taking where the tangent line crosses the x-axis, that's where y is equal to 0, so y2 will actually be equal to 0. So these are the coordinates of the second point. We'll now take this one and this one and go ahead and plug them into this formula. So y2 is 0, so you'll have 0, minus y1 is f of x sub n, divided by x2 is x sub n plus 1, minus x1 is x sub n. And this is all equal to the slope. Well, now think of this as being in parentheses, and take the denominator and move it over to this side, which will get you this. Uh, the negative of f of x sub n is equal to the slope times x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n. But you might remember, uh, in calculus, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So this slope is actually the derivative of the function evaluated at the point x sub n. So you can do this. The negative of x sub n is, and again, the slope is the derivative of the original function. So the slope turns into that right there, the derivative. And then it's still times x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n. Okay, next step, take this derivative and move it to the denominator on this side, which will get you to this. The negative of f of x sub n divided by the derivative evaluated at x sub n is equal to x sub n plus 1 minus x sub n. And then finally, the last step is to just take this and move it over to this side and make it positive. And when you do that, you wind up with this function right here. x sub n minus, so it's the original point that you pick, to minus the function 
evaluated at that point divided by the derivative evaluated at that point. And if you do that, that will give you the second point. So the idea is if you know the first point, you can use Newton's method and this formula to guide you to the second point and then repeat the process to guide you to the third point, to the fourth point, or as far as you want to go. So what that is, that's a derivation of where Newton's method comes from. Now in the next video, we'll use this method to actually uh, determine the zeros of a function.